See how nice they call me that is? Pretty amazing. Mostly cloudy in the evening. It's this new GMRS system that I got, and I'm going to give you a quick review of that radio and uh, its functions and uh, how cool it is. So I got a lot to cover. It stands for General Mobile Radio Service. Now in this video, I'm going to talk to you about GMRS and why I think that's something that every RVer should get involved with. I'm going to talk about why I think we need a, a national channel for RVers as they travel down uh, down the roads. That is what I think is the ultimate communication system uh, for RVers and boondockers. Hey everybody, Mike here, and I want to get technical with you. This video. Um, is going to be on the geeky side. Now I'm going to talk to you about uh, communications for RVers and uh, if that's something you're not interested in uh, don't worry move on and um, it, it, no th harm's lost we'll have more general interest stuff coming down the pike but if uh, that's something you have thought about and wondered about then this is a video that I think you'll find very helpful. I'm going to talk about uh, what I now think is the best solution for RVers to have in terms of two-way radio communications. It's not ham radio. Now many of you know that I am a ham radio operator. I love ham radio. I've been using it since I was a teenager. I am extremely active on it. I can, I'm very proficient at Morse code, all that stuff. I love ham radio. But look, ham radio is much too technical for most people. It, uh, it does wonderful public service as we just saw during the hurricanes and in times our community needs emergency communications. That's really its main purpose. But the rest of it is, is for hobbyists, people who want to get technical and play with antennas and, and SWR readings and uh, different modes and all sorts of geeky stuff. I don't want to talk about that and that's not a much practical use for RVers. What is, is a service called GMRS. Now in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about GMRS, and why I think that's something that every RVer should get involved with. I'm gonna talk about why I think we need a, a national channel for RVers as they travel down, uh, down the roads. And then I wanna to talk to you about uh, what really prompted this whole video is this new GMRS system that I got and I'm going to give you a quick review of that radio and uh, its functions and uh, how cool it is. So I got a lot to cover. Let me start with what is GMRS. As I said, it's not ham radio. It's not CB radio. Remember back in the 70s and 80s or those old videos that you might have seen? 10-4 uh, good buddy, you got your ears on, rubber ducky here. It's not, it's not like that. It is reliable, clear, FM communications often using much higher uh, power than uh, than those old CB radios. There's none of the congestion and the noise and the garbage that CB radio devolved into after its uh, popularity a couple decades ago. Yeah, I know some truck drivers still use CB and some RVers have CB, but it's not very useful and uh, it's just too noisy. GMRS, however, is a different subject. Uh, it stands for General Mobile Radio Service. And uh, I like to think of it as the evolution of CB radio. Um, think of it as uh, CB radio on steroids, uh, CB radio version 2.0, as some uh, advocates have, have pointed out. So how do you use it? Well, it isn't necessarily for just what they call on the ham bands, rag chewing, just talking back and forth. You could, but that's not its, its main advantage, I think, to RVers. One segment of the RV community, the Overlanders, they know all about this. It's very popular with Overlanders. They use channel 16 for communications, and they pick that up from the Jeepers, the people who uh, love to go out 4x4 four four, traveling around in their Jeeps. They've been using GMRS radios for a long time. In fact, they use uh, the Overlanders and the Jeepers use pretty much channel 16. And they got that because they like to be on 4x4s. Four, four times 4 is 16, channel 16. Okay, well, enough of that. But RVers haven't, uh, by and large, adapted it. Um, the challenge with GB GMRS is that you got to have a license. And the challenge is 
pretty low because all you had to do is go to the FCC website. We'll put a link below in the description. And you just fill out an online application, pay them 35 bucks, just like you buy a fishing license, and bam, you got your license. Uh, it took me 24 hours to get my call sign that I have to have. You have to use the call sign, but here's what's so neat about it. You get that license, it's good for 10 years, and it's good for you and your family. And your family includes your kids, your spouse, your grandparents, uh, your nieces, your nephews, your whole family can use that call sign. So uh, it's very simple to get a license. Now, GMRS also uses higher power. When you have that license, you can use as much as 50 watts, and the radio I'm gonna show you in a minute is a 50 watt, uh, 50 watts use. The problem with it is um, there is no general consensus for a channel. There are 22 channels on the GMRS band that you can listen to. You just click a button and you're on a channel. There's no general consensus as of now for which one RVers should use when they're traveling. I am proposing that they use channel 19. That's the old CB radio channel, you know, different frequency because CB radios can't talk to GMRS radios. but. Everybody's familiar with that old Channel 19. Well, use Channel 19. And so when we travel down the road, I'm going to have my radio tuned to Channel 19. And I'm going to, in all the videos we do where we mention GMRS, urge you to use it as well. In fact, I am hereby calling for a national campaign to make GMRS Channel 19 for RVers and those traveling down highways and roadways looking for travel information and sharing relevant information about road conditions and weather conditions. Now, there's other uses for it besides that. If you're caravanning with somebody, you may have used a, a little handy talkie, those little walkie talkies. Those are on the, most of those, the ones you buy that are all bubble wrapped that you can get, you know, for a few dollars. Those are on what's known as the FM RS, the Family Radio Service, FRS, Family Radio Service, very low powered, but you can do, if there's a car right behind you or an RV behind you, you can communicate. Uh, those work on the GMRS frequencies, the lower ones, the channels, uh, shouldn't use the word frequency, that's a ham radio term, they're on channels on GMRS, and they're fine. Jennifer and I use those uh, little uh, family radio service walkie-talkies, like when we're backing up. When I'm backing up the fifth wheel, she'll have it, and I can we can communicate better instead of those crazy hand signals we use. So uh, we'll use it that way. The radio I'm going to show you in a minute is what I urge something like that for everybody to get: uh, higher powered, higher quality, crystal clear audio when you're in range, and higher range. So uh, there's a couple of ways. To, to use it for even more range than the normal. What's the normal? Well, those little walkie-talkies, don't believe them when they say they're a five mile range or a 10 mile range. They're really a mile at best under the best conditions. And uh, most of the GMRS radios, um, talking what they call simplex, which is radio to radio, maybe a five mile range, more if it's clear. GMRS uh, works on line of sight communications. In other words, this is me and this is you with the radio. As long as we can see each other, and that's about five miles in a straight line, and there's nothing major like uh, my head's a mountain, like a mountain in the way, uh, you can pretty much communicate. Why do I say five miles? Well, think about it. The earth is round, right? And after about five miles, five to six to seven miles, the curvature of the Earth will have us in different positions. And as you transmit, it misses that, that other connection. So that's generally the line of sight. Now, GMR radios can have as much as 50 watts versus 5 watts legal for CB radios. So that helps a little bit. But there's another solution that GMSR has. Like ham radios, it has repeaters. And a repeater, this is my, my head is the mountain, and up here is a tower, right? So, I'm down here on this side of the mountain, you're down this side. We couldn't ever communicate because a mountain would block the way. But my radio can talk up to your radio up at the top of the mountain on a repeater tower, or, you know, the antenna, and yours can receive it, and they come back down to each other. That range can extend sometimes dozens, hundreds of miles even. So, there are a number of repeaters, not as many as there should be. I'm going to set one up at my Michigan uh, campsite. I'm going to set one up 
in Tennessee at the Woodlands at our campsite there. We'll be using repeaters there as well. But for RVers, I think this is so great. You can use them when you're caravanning, when you're talking with other people. You can use them for communications in a campground. Certainly when you're boondocking, I'd use channel 16 and channel 19. I think that just having that emergency backup communications, if the cell signals go down, to have that communication capability is something we should all have. So I'm gonna show you the system I just got. Actually, Midland Radio sent it to us and I'm really impressed with it. I'll show you how cool this is. This is the system I'm gonna have and we're going to incorporate GMRS now into our RV lifestyle. And I'm sure I'll have other videos where I'll refer to it. But this is, the, this is the main one. And again, I'm going to put links to everything we talk about in the description below. But enough of my babbling on here. I hope I got you thinking about this, this communications idea. Now I want to show you what I think is the ultimate communication system for RVers. It comes in an ammo can. Yes! This is an ammo can, really, from the U.S. military. Now, they've made it look good. They've refurbished it. By the way, when it's folded up like this, it's perfectly, perfectly waterproof, dustproof. Some people say it's even a little bit EMP-proof as well. I don't know about that. But when you open it up, this is what you see. All right, let me show you what this radio looks like. Uh, this is the, uh, the main on-off switch. And right away, you get to see how many amps you're drawing, uh, how many volts. I don't have anything on except that, but that's showing the state of the lithium battery, which is in this case. Let's turn it on. And there's, uh, there's what the radio looks like. As I said before, you can see there are 22 channels, right? And uh, they're, all, they're all in there uh, that you can use. You can scan your channels by pushing that button. You can choose one particular channel to monitor. There are weather channels, so you can listen to weather broadcasts. Uh, you can adjust all sorts of things from the color of the, the screen to uh, the, uh, the squelch, which determines how much noise it takes to break a signal. Now, I just turned it on. You can see now it's drawing 23 amps. You can turn that off if you don't want that on. That's really fine. The radio will work just fine without it, but I think it's nice to have. The lithium battery is very cool. Uh, you can charge it with 110 volts by plugging in right there. You can also run auxiliary power to it. Uh, you can hook it directly up to a battery that way. Very simple to operate. If it's very warm, there's a fan that will, and you can see it, you can see it on the amperage here. How when I turn on the fan, it changes a little bit. Uh, but that fan will help keep it cool. There are two three-watt speakers there. If it's the middle of the night and you're on this thing and you don't want any noise, you can plug in headphones there. There is a, uh, just by turning off the speaker. Over on this end of the case, this, uh, this door, uh, I printed up uh, a quick reference to the MXT 500, how to how to work it, what all the powers are. It lists the weather band channels. If you somebody says, oh, you got to listen to channel five, well then you see where it is. That, or they say you got to listen to this frequency. See that's channel five. Uh, and then it lists the repeaters that are available for GMRS, and it tells you what channels those are all on. Uh, and then there's just some general troubleshooting information. This is very helpful. There's the Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Phonetic Alphabet. Don't use that. You'll sound foolish on the air. These things are uh, little stuff you put on the bottom that will raise up the whole platform there, like little legs, and they just attach there. But it, what I like about this thing is this will actually, let, this will actually come out. You can remove that that whole case and then what I like to do with it is they have uh, it comes with a small little antenna right there incredible magnet strongest magnet I've ever seen and you put that on like so and then you can put the antenna up higher I'm going to put it up on the roof the metal is necessary for I told you this to get a little geeky for a ground plane the antenna needs metal and many of our vehicles and RVs are uh, fiberglass or are, uh, are not to metal, so you need that. And you can use the antenna like that for uh, 
little little extra help and uh, and then it comes with lots of cable and the antenna is uh, a standard uh, SO239 this is a PL259 for you radio geeks just plugs right into the front of the uh, of the ammo case and uh, and now your antenna is hooked up there are so many things I like about this thing besides the fact that you can run you can charge it with 110 volts or a battery but you can also charge with its own solar panel this is a 40 watt solar panel it comes complete with a charger and uh, just uh, put this thing out in the uh, in the Sun and it will charge that battery for the radio in about four hours they say so that's a pretty cool feature so for emergency communications, for being off the grid, for boondocking, this thing is, is pretty amazing. Now you can also take this radio out and mount it inside your motor home or wherever you want. Um, I like to keep it in that box and it's just great. Put it right in the RV. You can run that antenna uh, outside or however you want, even just often putting it just on top uh, works, works great. Let me just give you a shot of the quality of the audio. 50 knots, mostly cloudy, okay. waves 2 feet or less, Saturday night, northeast winds See how 10 nice to 15 knots cloudy increasing that is. to 15 to 20 knots after midnight, amazing. mostly cloudy in the evening. All right, so there you go. That is what I think is the ultimate communication system uh, for RVers and boondockers. And again, I am really excited about uh, trying to advocate RVers uh, get some sort of a GM RS uh, radio system and that we hang out together. We use Channel 19 as we travel uh, to keep uh, advised of road and weather conditions. And uh, I, think, uh, I think this is a pretty neat system. Again, I'll put links to all of this below. All right, so that's it for this week. Thank you guys for watching. If you didn't like the video, sorry about that, but you probably didn't stick around this long anyway. If you did like it, you're here this long, would you give us a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. Till next week, as Jennifer says, happy trails. Mm -hmm.